You might know that the French court of Louis XVI were extravagant spenders, but did you know they spent a lot of money on theater? Welcome to Theater History Thursdays. Today's topic is French neoclassical theater. Ongoing civil wars during the 16th century kept the French theater from progressing like England and Spain. Louis XIII brought national unity in the early 17th century, and this produced a desire to create a strong national culture. This meant strict government control of the arts. When Louis XVI came to the throne in 1661, he opened the national purse and began a massive building campaign, culminating in the most famous of his projects, the Palace of Versailles. French neoclassicism had its roots in the Roman and Greek eras, symbols of order and morality. The Académie Française was created in 1635 to enforce a set of rules for playmaking dictated by Aristotle's poetics. Plays could not be performed without their approval. In contrast to the popular theater in England and Spain, French plays were intended for the aristocracy and elite taste influenced their creation. There was a rise in the status of female actors, who now mingled with the upper classes. These women made important contributions to the development of French theater, even while living in the lap of luxury. Moliere was a singular force in fighting against the rules of neoclassicism. He mocked the academy and the aristocracy in his plays. With the patronage of the king, he was able to thwart his enemies and succeeded in placing comedy on par with tragedies. He is, ironically, the best-known playwright of this period, maybe because he broke all the rules. In New Perspectives Women's Work Project, we encourage playwrights to think outside the box. Our unique dramaturgical process has resulted in unique plays, some of which have gone on to receive awards and other recognition. That's it for Theatre History Thursdays. Stay tuned for more theatre history with New Perspectives.